Hey everyone, the name is Director, and today we have a question, a chance to interview an INFJ. Finally, we're gonna be interviewing an INFJ. Yes, we're gonna interview myself. Yeah, the reason I'm making this video is because in a lot of my videos I struggle to be real with all of you. Like, it's hard for me to put myself in my shoes when I talk about different personality types and personality psychology. It's hard for me to be myself on YouTube and on video. I feel often that when I talk about different matters that I tend to focus on a general perspective. I talk about things as if it could be about anybody. And sometimes beyond that, I have a bad habit of method acting. What I do is I tend to step into the shoes of the personality type I talk about and I talk about this personality type as if I was this personality type, as if I felt this way myself, as if I thought this way myself. And so I confuse a lot of people because they assume that I'm the same personality type as what I happen to be talking about in the video they see about me. So I get a lot of questions like, I thought you were an INTP, I was pretty sure you were an ENTJ. Didn't you say in an interview you were an ENFJ? I think I, I think I heard you say that you were an ESFP actually and uh, yeah maybe I accidentally got so far into it that I accidentally said me <laughs> or we when I was talking about another personality type and that's just one of my bad habits. Uh, I just have a very vivid uh, very real imagination. So today I want to talk about myself and some of uh, my struggles and my deeper issues and problems in life. I want to say first and foremost, yeah, I'm a YouTuber, but I don't do this full time. I work part time in customer service. 32 hours every week I work for Rituals Customer Service as a social media specialist and communicator, helping customers on the phone and uh, through emails and through Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Now, something I've come to notice is uh, since I moved to Amsterdam, I'm a bit of a coward and I have issues with uh, cowardice and with fear and uh, I'm not as brave as I thought I was, you know. Moving to Amsterdam I came to realize first I take too long to think about things and that means often they run into the sand, you know. I take too long and so the opportunity goes away and so I miss out on the chance. Now, as of the moment, uh, I'm dating an uh, ENFP and uh, I'm really happy in love. I'm really grateful to have her by my side and I'm so lucky to have met her. Because it's kind of when I met her that things started truly happening in my life. And uh, I started taking initiative, I started trying to be a better person, I started trying to push myself to do better and to make something out of myself. I was very impressed by her and her spirit and her energy and her enthusiasm and how she did things and how she pushed herself and how motivated and passionate she was. And I felt I wanted to be that way as well. And uh, it's kind of in that, uh, that my ethics and my personal character and individuality started to truly come out because before then I had only thought about what I could do for other people, you know, my whole career, my whole line of business, my whole thought process was focused on what I could do for other people. So I was focused on helping other people but I could never push myself to do anything for myself, you know. I noticed that I had zero personal ambition but lots of ambition for others and uh, so I tended to hit into road roadblocks because I would get into the coaching or supporting role in other people's projects and I would go far into it and then their business would take off and I would be stuck where I was and I wasn't really getting anywhere with my life and I was taking studies, randomly studying different subjects, getting basically nowhere. I was uh, kind of unsure of what I wanted for myself or what it is for a life I was dreaming of or envisioning or hoping for. I was very unclear. I struggled to commit to anything or to follow through on anything. I was kind of in a stasis, you know, I was studying things and learning about things and thinking about things, but I was not in a rush to do anything with myself or with my life. Now, my life has been kind of up and down because when I was in politics I saw how proactive I could be for the sake of other people. 
in groups and uh, when managing a team and when helping other people, I had so much drive and so much confidence. You know, I was uh, always the first person to take on initiative and to take on responsibility for other people. I would always make the group's emotions, values and beliefs my own. I would always focus on how to further those beliefs and how to get other people alongside us in the project. I was recruiting, I was out on campaign trails, always trying to help and push and motivate other people to join. Now, as I did this, my studies collapsed. I neglected my personal studies. I neglected my personal life. Uh, I didn't have a real income. I lived on loans. I, I was very financially irresponsible. You know, I have to carry that with me. On my back today I'm recovering getting back on track trying to make smart decisions trying to be more realistic about things nowadays uh, I devote myself to YouTube and to the creative process I've always been a creative type I've been writing blogs since 2007 I started writing novels when I was 11 so what I did was uh, I loved all kinds of fiction, fantasy, books. I wanted to be a writer, a philosopher. And, you know, I came to realize uh, quickly that I needed philosophy to feel alive. And without philosophy, it was like life had no point. You know, the study of ideas and why things are the way they are, the study of religion, spirituality, consciousness, the study of psychology, became one of the number one projects in my life and that happened when I was very young. I started out when I was 13 scribbling down my first belief systems, my theories and thoughts on harmony, balance, life and, and the meaning of life. I was fascinated, addicted to the ideas of the ancient Greeks, especially Aristotle and Plato. And uh, this was something I have to come to take with me in the rest of my life. In politics it was forming and reflecting on deeper ideologies and how to organize society and in uh, rhetoric and in communication and in university it was the study of sociology and it was the study of ideas and language and it was the study of postmodernism and different ideas and beliefs especially the ideas of Aristotle now today nowadays the MTI has become one of my core singular pursuits and uh, it has become one of my core singular pursuits in life or my core singular aspiration or dream and my current project because of the potential of understanding the human mind. If we can understand human motivation and values and interests, we can build a better society, a society that mimics and supports human nature rather than challenges it or makes it more difficult so what i feel is today today's society struggles to motivate and engage people it fails to build confidence it fails to help and support people the way it should i feel often uh, the values we have are backwards i feel uh, strongly that there's a big disharmony in the world and a lot of unnecessary conflict between different people and different individuals and so I have a lot of political aspirations in trying to solve those conflicts. Now I've found myself in this role my entire life as the conflict solver, mediator, healer. And it's kind of ridiculous. It was started early as a person who made sure my family and my sister and the people around me were happy and in good condition. You know, I was the person that made everyone relax. I was the person that made people laugh, the person that made people feel okay, the person that people came to and opened up to, the person who helped out whenever people were struggling or had or faced with stress. And that's a role I've just come to first struggle with and have lots of difficulties with, but later in life I also came to accept this role in myself and understood it was a natural part of me and a positive part of me. I came to recognize that while a lot of the time I took on too much stress and made myself too responsible for other people, I did love responsibility and I did enjoy the fact of taking care of other people. So it's, some, it's a role I've come to cling to and hold on to and one I hope I can contribute to also on YouTube and as a YouTuber 
what I'm one of my core valuation metrics for success is my video helps another person feel better, helps a person feel more reassured, helps a person feel better about themselves, helps give a person more flow and more control and more confidence in themselves because I believe that's the key to success. In customer service, something I've noticed about myself is Whenever a customer calls and maybe they're upset, maybe they've had a bad day, maybe they're struggling with something, it doesn't matter. I, ma I make things better. I make things okay. I fix things. You know, I obviously I'm not a magic worker. I can't make an angry person happy from uh, nowhere. But I'm a person that is creative enough to think of a way to fix a situation and make it better. Beyond that, I mimic the energy and emotions of other person, their expressions, how they talk and everything about them. And I talk to them as an equal, somebody on their side, in their shoes, somebody who understands what they're going through. I make them feel listened to and heard. I understand their culture, their country, where they're from and what they want and what they need to feel better. I understand who wants to know the system and I, want, I understand the one that needs the most emotional reassurance. No matter what it is you need, I try to figure it out. I try to figure out what people need and then I try to think of a way to give it to them. So, something I've always come to love is the bigger picture. I've come to realize in time that most people are generally very short-sighted and shallow in how they see things. That means they focus on how things appear not what's underneath, and they focus on what things are now, not what things will become. So what I do is I focus on what things will become, and I focus on what things are underneath. I believe that what is underneath is much more real than what is on the surface. I believe in awakening and bringing out what's underneath, and I'm making that emanate the whole person and the whole being of an individual. I believe in thinking long term, about a person's potential and what they're capable of and what they could achieve if they were given the best chance. And so I found myself drawn to coaching roles and supportive roles and leadership roles. I wanted to be the person that everyone will come to when there's a problem and I wanted to be the person that will help people fix that problem. But I've had to think long and hard about whether I'm just enabling people. What if I'm just giving people what they are, what they want, you know? What if uh, I should be focusing on training them to fix problems on their own? What if I'm addicted to the position of the helper or supporter? And what if I'm not actually helping people with what I do? So what I've liked about what I do here on YouTube is I felt that I'm not helping anyone. I'm not fixing any problem. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just giving you the tools to try to figure things out for yourself. So that's probably what I've come to feel this project is something I could be proud about and feel good about. In other parts of my life, I have a bad habit of coming to people's aid whenever they call and sometimes even if they don't call and I've noticed that about myself and that I have a problem with that. If you come to a person before they've asked for your help to offer a solution, you also make them feel invalidated. You make them feel incapable of solving problems on their own. So I had to really think about that. Now, my projects, my aspirations, uh, what I do here on YouTube and on ericdor.com, that's part of something bigger. Obviously, I want my system to take off and obviously I want people to start using it. And I want it to take over the existing alternatives. I want people to stop using the MTI and I want people to start using my model. And I want people to understand the differences. But I struggle with uh, conflict and I struggle with asserting myself. I don't like to attack other people's ideas. I like to focus on the strengths of my own ideas. And so I can become kind of an isolated island with all the drama that tends to go on online with all the issues and conflicts between different systems and models and with all the people out there trying to start stuff, I've always tried to pull back and to focus on the longer game. I've been hoping that, yeah, with time, my ideas will take off and people will pick up on it. And I don't need the conflict, I don't need the drama, I don't need the hyperboles, I don't need the extreme examples. 
I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and I think that will in the very end win the race. I believe that the turtle, turtle wins the race. The turtle wins the race, not the bunny, not the quick-footed, uh, uh, spinning berserker, but the turtle, the person that slowly and steady works through things carefully and maintains consistency, maintains a strong and steady foot, maintains a clear perspective and clear insight. I believe that person who sees everyone as they go, as they walk, the person who evaluates and thinks critically about their work as they go, that person is going to win. That person is going to hit the finish line. But then again, I also don't believe there is a finish line. I believe that life is a journey, an endless journey, and I believe the journey is more important than the destination. So... I'm more addicted to the process of thinking about these stuff than to finalizing the process and posting it and publishing it and completing it. I've never had any thoughts about completing it. I never had a thought to call myself an expert. What I focus on instead is my openness. So what I see in myself is my slow openness, my cautious openness, my careful, steady Need, focus on harmony, my focus on proactivity and slow and careful work and forward mo movement and future will eventually take me where I want. My approach is good enough, my approach will get me where I need to be. The journey needs to be there, the journey needs to happen and the journey is what makes things worth it, not getting there in the end. I feel if you rush things, if you're too quick, if you're too hasty, you also lose the potential, the true potential of what you do. If you're too hasty, if you're too focused on putting out a system and making money from it and spinning it, you also lose the content that you're trying to sell. You lose it in the marketing and you lose it in the headlines and you lose it in the sales pitches. The sales pitches, the selling of the work it becomes more important than the development of the work. So, what can I say about myself? What is my biggest struggle in life? It might not sound like it, but then my biggest struggle is rushing myself. It is pushing myself too hard. It's burning myself out. I have a history of burnout, I have a history of uh, poor stress management. So what I find myself doing is I missed out on enjoying and having fun with what I do. I've been too focused on what I do, I've been too focused on my work, I've been obsessive. In fact, I've been so obsessive that I forgot to enjoy and celebrate what I already have. The relationships I have, the friends I have, the people in my life, my family. And my current situation, I never take time to make any short term plans or to go out or to enjoy myself. I'm always thinking about what I'm going to do long term and about my long term projects. I'm too I'm focused, I'm too focused and I get too into things, so into things I can't get out of them. And sometimes I know it and I see it myself. I become literally unresponsive. I struggle to communicate with other people because I'm so caught up in my own world. I'm so caught up with my own thoughts. And that's why some of my perhaps most hard-hitting videos have been that about, for example, INFJ ghosting or INFJ obsessive behavior. And, and it's because it's the most real for me. I mean, I'm on side, you know, putting myself too much in other people's shoes, forgetting about my own needs, becoming too compulsive and obsessive about my projects, and becoming too lost in my own head and in my own thoughts. I know I have a lot of struggles and I know I'm not a perfect person. I process through and introspect on my life all the time. And that's why perhaps you get weeks where I don't post anything. Sometimes I'm so focused on trying to understand myself and figure out my problems and issues that I can't perform or do and put out content the way I usually do. 
there is a limit to how much content I can process and how much information I can take in and how fast I can to do it and how well I can do it. And I can't sacrifice quant quality for quantity. If I would make the content where in a time when I felt, felt sensitive or vulnerable or confused, the content would be sensitive, vulnerable and confused. The content would lack the energy that I wanted to have and it would perhaps risk making more harm than good. And I believe it's more important to be kind than to do harm. So sometimes I get stuck, sometimes I don't know where I'm going anymore, sometimes I get lost in the process and that's because I am tracing steps that no person has ever walked before. I'm working with ideas that no person has thought about or entertained in the past. I'm working on systems that no person has developed in the past. If I was a copy, it would be easy. The steps would already be there. I would only have to follow the instructions and in steps complete my projects. But because I have to develop the ideas myself as I go, the process is a lot more creative and a lot more uncertain. I can't show the spiky success that other people do. I can instead show the slow, steady development. I can instead work carefully and open-mindedly in developing and making it as good as possible. So I say this about myself, hopefully hoping to encourage some of you guys in what you are doing. No matter what your project is, what your long-term aspiration is, what your struggles are, other people have them too and other people deal with this these issues as well. You're not alone and there are people that have had the same issues you had and some of them have had other solutions than you did and some of those solutions could my, maybe, maybe help you get further in life. The first solution, the first realization I've had that truly really put my life in perspective and gave me movement was the realization that I couldn't do everything alone. That realization is uh, perhaps one of the three most important things I will learn in my entire life and I don't know what the other two are yet. The realization that you need other people to succeed and that you need help from other people and that you can't do everything alone, that completes you. It's strange but it completes you. It completes you because it gives you the focus you have to put yourself and your all into the things you can do. If you recognize that you can't do everything, you become more motivated to do what you can do. You stop entertaining the impossibilities, the projects that you could never achieve, and you start thinking about the potential you have and the visions that fit and ring the most true to you. And together with other people, you can get further than you could alone. If you recognize your blind spots, if other people can show you the way when times when you feel dark, your life will become a little bit more bright. So this was my short interview with myself. I hope it gave you some thoughts and perspectives on being an INFJ. I hope it helped you in some way or some form. And if you felt it could help other INFJs, feel free to share it with them as well. Thanks everyone for watching and thanks everyone for subscribing. Thanks so much for being a part of my journey and for so consistently being with me and being loyal to me and being supportive of what I do. I love you all and you mean the world to me.